Hey, let's take the Evo for a drive. Wait, what's that? The service engine soon light? AKA check engine light? AKA idiot light? How are you the hardest one? Hmm. P0171, system too lean. I wonder what's causing that. Let's take a look under the hood. Well, that master flow sensor plugin looks like garbage. That could be it. Oh, and yeah, those 1000cc low Z injectors pushing over 400 some horse on 85? Yeah, that's probably not the best thing for the job. Time to take it to ASM for some TLC. So we will be swapping out my old PTE, or Precision Turbo Engineering, 1000cc low Z injectors for a set of new FIC, or Fuel Injector Clinic, 1200cc high Z injectors. Yeah, that's a mouthful when you say all those acronyms out loud. Uh -huh. So this won't be a full how-to video since I didn't actually do this job myself, but this video should provide a few tips if you plan to swap out injectors in your EVO 8 or EVO 9. And first you might be saying, well, what is low Z versus high Z? How do I tell the difference? Which is better? Well, let's cover that now. So the low Z or low impedance injectors are an older style of injector, more of a short and fat looking injector. High Z or high impedance injectors are a newer technology and look more tall and skinny. And if you really want more details on the differences on how they operate, you're gonna have to do a bit more research online to find that. I'm not gonna go into all the details in this video. But for which style is better, let me paraphrase from the Fuel Injector Clinic website. Today's high impedance injectors are able to outperform the older low impedance injectors at larger flow rates due to their newer designs, tighter manufacturing tolerances, and much lighter moving components. A valve and spring assembly for a current high Z injector may weigh less than a third of the assembly of an older injector. This newer technology makes current high Z injectors more linear throughout their pulse range, and they are able to repeat shorter pulse widths consistently, which means they can provide excellent partial throttle and idle characteristics, and operate at higher maximum operating pressures. So there you have it. I'm switching from low Z to high Z. So on to the actual removal process. Removing the old PTE 1000cc impedance injectors is pretty simple. First, you'll remove the retaining clips on each injector to release the plugs. Once all four wiring plugs are released, you can move the wiring out of the way. Next, remove the bolts holding down the fuel rail. Once the fuel rail is free, you can remove your old injectors and seals. These new FIC 1200cc injectors are a direct plug-and-play fitment to the OEM harness. However, if you decide to run high z injectors in your EVO 8 or EVO 9, you'll need to buy or make a resistor pack delete plug. The cost of a resistor pack delete plug is around $30, or the process of making one would involve cutting the plug off the OEM resistor pack and soldering all five wires together. What the resistor pack delete does is it essentially moves the resistance by taking the 12 volt wire and making it send all 12 volts to all four injector wires, hence five total wires. So I elected to buy a new plug and then leave my old OEM resistor pack in place without cutting into it. That way, if I ever need to go back to low Z injectors in a pinch, I could still make them work. Another reason I made the switch to these 1200cc injectors is because of injector duty cycle. Injector duty cycle, or IDC, is a ratio between the pulse width required for a proper air to fuel ratio and the length of time you have to inject that amount of fuel. So injector duty cycle will be represented as a percentage. And in the data sheet provided with my new injectors from FIC, they recommend not exceeding a 90% injector duty cycle. Now my old 1000cc low Z injectors were close to being maxed out, so that's close to 100%. And sizing up to these 1200cc injectors should get me near or below that 90% IDC. So onto the install process. It's actually pretty straightforward. A helpful tip is to put a little bit of oil onto the new seals so they slide in easily and don't roll off the injector. Then place all four injectors into your fuel rail first. Set it down as an assembly, lining up each injector into the intake manifold. Next, move your wiring harness back in place and plug in each injector and reinstall the retaining clips. And finally, don't forget to tighten down your fuel rail bolts. So that was it for the injector swap. Next on my list was changing out the mass airflow sensor plugin. 
I purchased a used plug-in a while ago when I noticed how bad mine looked, but since the car was still running fine, it took me some extra motivation to actually get it fixed. Andy at ASM has plenty of rewiring experience and all the proper tools, so it seemed like a good time to let him get the job done. Once the new injectors were installed and the mass airflow sensor plug-in was rewired, Andy changed the injector scaling to match the larger injectors, and then the Evo was moved onto Andy's all-wheel drive dyno. This again is where I let the professionals do their work as I try to learn what I can along the way. I filmed a couple dyno poles using my cell phone on a gimbal for stability, <laughs> but the noise and the vibrations of the dyno really messed with the gimbal stabilization. Check it out. So the end result was a healthy 430 horse, 440 torque combo. The boost spikes to about 29 PSI and then falls off to around 24, 25. This stock Evo 9 Turbo is certainly a limiting factor of the power of my current setup, but I really do love the power band this whole setup provides. Doing these small changes today to the Evo did not actually change much when it comes to dyno numbers. But not having a random check engine light pop up every now and then, and having more room for my injector IDC tolerance is really worth the peace of mind to me. So depending on who you ask, my current all-wheel drive horsepower and torque is close to the maximum amount you can push on a stock OEM 4G63 bottom end. And I don't plan on getting a built block bottom end anytime soon. But of course, that doesn't mean I'm not always a little tempted now and then just to throw on a bigger turbo. The, idea, the ideal curve would be to try to keep this torque flat. was last time but more ethanol is going to run leaner so knowing that this is e70 that you might get e85 we're running it at 11 4 11 3 you can run them up to about a 12 afr so as you get more ethanol this it's is going to get a little leaner, leaner and more power. Okay, so, so which so should make a little more power that was about 28 29 psi how much more if the boost isn't holding i'm asking for a lot more up here and it's it's just nothing. So you got an FB turbo we can put on there or what? Yeah, need a bigger turbo. That's why the torque falls off so much.
So that's it guys. Please check the comments or the video description for any updates on what I may have said wrong in this video or what I have learned since making it. And as always, this is Paul from Boosted Films saying thanks so much for watching.